say you have an idea for a research project. What is your process from initiation to publication? The first step is identifying what the topic is. What is it that we're researching? What is it that we're going to be designing a study around or, um, or reviewing literature or what have you? So identifying that topic is the first one. Um, because most of my projects are along QI, pro uh, quality improvement projects, I'm a little bit biased, so I have a bit of an algorithm on how I like to do things or how I like to approach research projects. I think the next step after that is to gather some background information, um, and that could be sort of looking at your baseline data that you'd like to be able to compare to, um, or doing literature review and seeing what else is out there, what other people have published along the same lines as your idea. Um, gathering data can be difficult, especially if you're working in a hospital, you don't know who to approach, and there's a whole bunch of levels that you have to go through to get some uh, EMR data that may be more accessible in other settings. My next step is usually to brainstorm ideas. So, um, you know, what is it that, how do I want to approach the issue at hand? You know, what, um, how can different studies be designed and which one's the most efficient and pra pragmatic really? Um, so, you know, doing some brainstorming around that. Um, also, I think it's important to identify stakeholders. And, you know, it, are patients involved? And if so, you may need to get an approval from a uh, research ethics board. Um, you know, if it's just, uh, if it's charts review, what is it that's uh, involved? So identifying who, which, what are the key players in your research uh, will help sort of navigate um, and come up with uh, a research working group and who it is that you need to include in your research meetings and how to um, move your ideas forward. The next step is uh, once I have all this information, my topic is very clear, I've done some background work, I sort of have an idea on the process uh, and I know the people that are involved, then I, and it, then I design a study protocol. So in the protocol, um, I'm very clear about sort of the thesis, what is our main goal, the relevance of the uh, project at hand, you know, you, you clearly state your methods, your outcomes. Um, your anticipated results, just so you have a reference frame to go back to, because it, you know sometimes what, when you get too bogged down in actually collecting data and doing the research, you lose track of the bigger picture. So it's a nice way to write everything out and creating that protocol, so you can refer back to it and see if you're really on track or not. Um, the other thing I think helps if you do this early on is to come up with a data abstraction form. So it's a way of you know collecting all of your raw data. So it's encrypted or protected if there's patient information, um, but also it's a it's a it's a central way or a master sheet uh, where you can plot your raw, raw data for you to review later on. So I think if you have all of your tools in place first. Um, it makes it that much easier to carry out, carry out the research once you're actually doing the project. The next step is executing, actually doing the project. And the last step is the publishing, or whether it's by a, a form of doing a poster or a paper um, or a presentation. I think um, once you've, you know, you, once you've um, finished the project and you've looked at your results and you ha you've drawn some conclusions, then you can present it in any which way uh, you, you prefer, really. So what ways can beginners get started with research? Some of the ways that uh, beginners can get started in research is by looking at the peer role itself. I think if, we're, if we dissect the peer role, there are some really good research ideas you can get from there. So for example, we know that PAs increase access to healthcare in primary care or any, any uh, um, setting actually, but um, we know that they increase access to healthcare, reduce wait times, uh, reduce physician burnout, and many other positive qualities that we're able to um, offer uh, as a result of being a PA. So I think if we are even to look at some of those and dissecting that and designing a research project around that topic, I think it's very valuable. So for example, if, uh, if you want to talk about, let's say, reduced wait times and as a PA in primary care, if you're gathering data and keeping uh, track of the patients you see, uh, then and, and, and then you can compare it to some of the baseline data that the EMR may have, may have or the clinic can provide you. I think that's a pretty solid research project. And it speaks volumes because it, you know, when, once you publish it and you're able to show that the value you added to that particular setting um, is, is very powerful. 
some of the ways that existing PAs can uh, get into research would be uh, maybe from their workflow itself. So, for example, you know, we all face uh, sometimes in our, whether we're in clinic or operating room or the ward or wherever it is that we're practicing, sometimes we think, gee, I wish I could make this better. I wish, you know, um, our, this current framework could be modified to avoid um, this lag. Or, you know, I wish that I could improve patient outcomes for X, Y, and Z. Like, whatever it is that the problem is that you're faced with, which we all are in everyday practice, I think if we capitalize on those moments and those ideas, they can be pretty good research projects. Um, so just to give an example, going back to my the current project we're doing for our breast surgery patients, we realized you know a lot of these women that were uh, already very anxious about their diagnosis, they've just had a surgery, now they're uh, you know worried at home about this drain that's not draining and things are getting worse and it's painful and the swelling is increasing. You know, for me that was an aha moment to say, I wish I could change that for them or I wish the outcomes could be different, or that they wouldn't have to, after everything they've been through, chemo and what have you, I wish that they wouldn't have to suffer with this minor issue at home. So uh, capitalizing on that, and designing a, uh, a project, or even just you know bouncing ideas off of your coworkers or the physicians you work with uh, to see, and brainstorming, going back to my algorithm, to see how is it that you can uh, uh, improve that, I think those, those uh, projects, that you're faced with and you're motivated uh, to try to fix and, and overcome some of those challenges, I think those are pretty good research projects as well. And how can PA students incorporate research during school? Uh, I think there are a number of ways that uh, PA students can get involved in research. One of them, um, and with the opportunity present, I think is if, if you see a supervising position or someone that you're shadowing that's doing research and you like to volunteer or you have the opportunity to sort of uh, participate in existing researching projects, uh, I think it's a very good way of you know, getting your foot in the door. And for, for somebody like me who does not have a research background uh, in my academic career, in my, in my academic years, um, that's, that sense of fear or uncertainty might be lifted since you've seen a research project or a trial being performed, um, you know, very up close. So I think that can help uh, and, and it can also just, you know, make you feel more confident and motivated um, in wanting to do research in your, once you're a practicing PA. So I think that is valuable and also um, now that we have JCAN PA, which is going to be a great platform where all, we're all going to publish and, and learn from each other's research, I think uh, you know, staying up to date with what's uh, happening in the PA world and also in the, you know, where, which, where, what are the topics being investigated and where the research projects are, whether staying up to date with the literature, JCAN PA, JAPA, what have you, I think uh, the students can, um, they, they can get inspired and uh, it's a good way to sort of uh, stay, you know, be motivated and uh, uh, and learn from whatever's happening. What research? Uh, that's not good. Not whatever's happening uh, with uh, the research that's uh, being published. And do you think there's a lot of research uh, about PAs in Canada right now? There is not, but I'm confident that uh, I'm optimistic that it's uh, it's emerging. You know that research rule that unfortunately is not built into the um, our training currently. I think uh, with more and more PAs understanding and learning the value of research and what it does for our profession and for our everyday jobs, uh, I think you know as more P PAs are being inspired by that, more research is being done. Um, so I think it's emerging. I think I think we're changing and we're um, you know. Hopefully the students are being inspired, especially when you come to the conference and you see all the research work that everybody's done, which is phenomenal. Um, I think definitely we're on the path to adding more to um, our, our research and publications. Um, I truly believe that we're all capable of it. I think we're, you know, we're professionals, we're a very smart uh, group of individuals uh, that you know, have each has a lot to offer. Um, and uh, now I'm optimistic that uh, there's definitely more research that is coming down the pipeline. Excellent. And what are your future directions in research? 
So I see myself as a health advocate, and my projects uh, I'm biased because a lot of my projects are, are are along the lines of health promotions and quality improvement. So I think I'm going to continue um, doing those. There are uh, I'm always open, and I'm always looking for ideas and opportunities to improve the current uh, system and the current processes. Um, so. And I enjoy it, so I think I'm gonna continue, and I'm gonna. I'm hoping to publish more and and um, write more for the PA journals, and uh, hoping to bring new projects and new ideas to the conference next year.